in the Southern Conference Championship. That type of winning builds a lot of character, and your, your players keep – it's kind of a snowball effect. Your players keep believing and believing that they're going to find a way to win football games. And, you know, I'd rather be lucky than good. Hats off to our seniors. They had outstanding senior leadership. We challenged them each and every week because people thought they weren't tough enough to play football in the Southern Conference. And they did, and they proved them wrong. And now we're 9-2 and two and going into the playoffs, and we ought to be high enough that uh, we would have strong consideration maybe to play at home next week uh, in the first round of the Southern Conference Championship, first round of the playoffs. Uh, you know, and our coaches and staff did a super job of having working hard. You know, there's so many hours that go into – uh, winning a Southern Conference championship, you would not believe how many hours. And our coaching staff did a super job of finding a way to make the play and coaching our players to make the play. And, you know, our football team has a great attitude. And that's why they won the Southern Conference championship. They believed they could. Had a little luck along with it, but we made the play. And all I could see was over here in the corner of the end zone. <laughs> the ball was batted. I think they batted it about four or five times. And finally I did see the official say he was out of bounds. And, you know, it's, it's one of those football games. I mean, it's, it's, that's what you want. I mean, that's what you want the Southern Conference Championship to come down to. I know it's maybe not, it may kind of be a it, – it, it provides for great, great memories, Bill, and it builds great character on your football team. Of course, we'd like to have won by two or three touchdowns, but a game like this, Bill, is a great deal of character. And plus, we won the football game. You can go back. And there's a lot of things you need to work on and a lot of things we can get better at. You know, but we found a way to make the play on the road – and win the Southern Conference Championship. And my hat's off to our football team and our coaching staff for doing a super job of doing it. Nice going, Tim. Well, you know, I, I just say we're going to be right back after these commercial messages, and we'll take a look at those first half highlights. <laughs> Tennessee, and it looked like it was going to start as a blowout, Tim, up 21 to nothing, and it just looked like we were just going to cruise all afternoon. Well, that's a great lesson to learn from this type of football game. We were very fortunate. We had a couple of turnovers. I think we got 14 points off of turnovers uh, in the first quarter. Uh, Joe made a great throw also in the first quarter to Chris Wright for his first touchdown catch of the, of the year. Well, one thing for sure, good-looking uniforms won football games. East Tennessee will be undefeated. The Partisans wanted pass interference on this third and two play as the game got underway, but the way the officials saw it, Sean Austin was just going for the ball. But the Buccaneers got a break, and punter Corey Collins got an Emmy for this award-winning performance on a roughing the kicker penalty. But no sooner had the ball gotten back in the hands of the Bucks when quarterback Greg Ryan's pass was intercepted by nose guard Walter Flowers with a sensational diving catch in front of the intended receiver, Woodrow Dixon. Incredible. The Eagles were cooking at the enemy 29, and Dupree and company went right to work. Fullback James Williams cut through the Buccaneer defense, off to his left, and when he finally went down, it was first and goal from the ET3. Joe Dupree broke the scoring ice three plays later on a dive off left tackle. It was 7-0 Georgia Southern. Again, Dupree, option left, seeing the opening, and was into the promised land was shaping up into a highly emotional contest, but Coach Mike Cavan did take time out to invite this official over for Thanksgiving dinner. The Eagle defense continued to stifle the Bucks' attack as quarterback Greg Ryan got the mash smash, forcing his pass to miss the target. And Southern was right back on track. The fast track went on second and 10. James Williams broke through the middle of the ETSU defense faster than you could say Tennessee waltz, and he was off on a 50-yard touchdown track. Well, we knew going to the game that um, they did some things defensively that really uh, hurt them inside. Uh, I think that because they were a young football team, they had to play a lot of guessing game. And that somewhere opened up the inside running game. We told ourselves they were just going to play basic Georgia Southern football. Meanwhile, the Bucks needed to get something going, but what they got was a tipped ball Scott Dykes couldn't handle, but Scott Davis could. Another superb diving interception, putting Georgia Southern right back in the catbird seat. And Joe Dupree felt quite comfortable there, too, as a stunned East Tennessee crowd watched in total disbelief as Joe found a streaking Chris, the Comet right, down the middle, wide open. The Eagles were soaring 21 to nothing, which is how the first quarter came to an end. It was, believe it or not, Ripley, Wright's first TD catch of the season. Well, you know, that kind of shocked me, you know, going into this game. I knew East Tennessee State had a good team and I knew great, uh, Coach Kevin was a great coach. I had the opportunity of playing under him my freshman year. 
But then we came out, and all of a sudden it's 21 and nothing, you know. I'm like, golly, what's going on? <laughs> but then I, mean, I think the real Eastern Tennessee uh, team came to play, and that was somewhat evident, evident in, uh, towards the end of the game. Well, truer words were never spoken, but the wake-up call came early in the second stanza when Williams got racked by Craig Weisick. His shoulder pads struck the ball, and it shot into the air like being fired out of a geyser. Watch it from ground level. ETSU recovered, and this time the Bucks didn't squander the opportunity. Greg Ryan started hitting passes with surgical precision. This play seemed to be open all day. Ryan to Chris Beatty. Here it is again as the secondary saw it and the Georgia Southern Eagles simply couldn't find the magic formula to stop it most of the time. And then on a play you may not have seen since junior high, the fumble Ruski. Somewhere in this maze, Woodrow Dixon has the football. 21-7 Eagles, and isn't it interesting how we love plays like this when our team does them and detest them when our opponents use them, especially when they're used to perfection. But the Southern contingent was still happy with a 14-point lead. After all, East Tennessee couldn't possibly overcome a deficit like that. Of course, it's that kind of thinking that has General George Armstrong Custer enjoying his place in history. All those passes that Ryan had been missing in the first quarter were quartz locked on target in the second. That last one to Dixon got 21 yards. And again, over the top, Jeff Johnson on the receiving end this time, and Southern's lead didn't seem so ominous. Here it is again from the reverse angle as Johnson splits the Southern defense. It was first and goal from the five, but somehow the Eagle defense held thanks to the monster mash. A 10-yard loss on this play, and on third and goal, Alex does it again as the Bucks tried the Utah pass and mash knocked him back to Salt Lake City. So the Bucks had to settle for a 28-yard Pat Crust field goal, and the lead at intermission had dwindled to 11. I'm glad this football game's over with. I knew it was going to be this type of football game. I tried to tell everybody it was. And uh, if they went through the Southern Conference right now and played the entire season, they would be playing for a Southern Conference championship or possibly a playoff berth in one double-A. Well, they're not, and we are, and we'll be back to take a look at the second half highlights. But first, we're going to pause for this and then great moments in Georgia Southern football history with Irk Russell and... Hi, this is Nate Hirsch, along with former head coach Irk Russell, and we're set for our weekly edition of great moments in GSU football history. Today with the playoffs coming up next weekend, we thought we'd take a look back to Georgia Southern's first ever playoff appearance, and it occurred Thanksgiving weekend back in November of 1985. Now, the interesting fact of this game, you're taking on a Jackson State team in this ball game. They had a great year going themselves, had tremendous talent, one of the bigger teams we've probably ever played. But you may have done a little uh, psych job on them before the game. Well, I don't know about uh, a psych <laughs> job. They sure psyched me. I told you earlier that I'd been scared a lot of times in my coaching career, but this might have been uh, uh, the epitome of all of that. They're the biggest guys I've ever seen, but our guys played great. Uh, did everything well. Uh, beat them something to nothing. I can't remember what it was, but it was a great start for our first playoff game ever. Let's First time we ever broke out the Just One More Time t-shirts, too. That, that, that was the time to use it, for sure. Let's take you back then, look at some of the highlights in a tremendous Jordan Southern win in the rain Thanksgiving weekend. There's Ham shaking loose. He can't run fast enough to do anything but win. Yep. Well, they had some great talent on their team, Jackson State, but we were a little quicker that day. Here's Tracy, Tracy back again. to throw, and he's being chased out again. This one's going to get hauled in for a touchdown. Georgia Southern, Tony Belser. Tony Belser. Number Got 21 it. hauls that one in. And, and there's out. a pitch on with uh, Ricky Harris. Good strength, good speed, good football player. A good play. Going to get in close and bang it in straight ahead with Gerald. He shows everybody he was across the goal line. There's Tracy again. They missed him. Yep. Here he goes. Another brilliant run. <laughs> what a block <laughs> downfield. I think he had them a little winded at this time late in the game. There's a counter play with Ricky Harris again for a six or seven. That was a good play in our repertoire then. And this game Field really. Field goal by Yogi. Right. Tim Foley would knock it through. And the Eagles went on actually to win this game 26 to nothing. And just dominated things here. It was the well, icing It sure on the surprised cake. me. 
And you got to help me out there on That's uh, Tony Belser. Tony Belser. Okay. Sneak it in there again for the All touchdown. Right. And a great win. And little did we realize that was going to set up the trip next week to Middle Tennessee State and what was going to happen later on in 85 with yeah. the championship. Who would have thought that was the first of four playoff games? All successful. That's right. But well, that's the story on what happened with our first playoff game. And that's uh, kind of wrap things up for this season. We hope you've enjoyed our little reminders of our brief history in football. Back again with you next year for more great moments in GSU football history. As the second half began with Georgia Southern forcing their host to punt, and Lady Luck was smiling on the Eagles. First, Rob Stockton knocked this third down pass away, forcing the punting situation. And when Dexter Dawson got smashed on the return, the ball popped loose again, only to see Eric Thigpen pick it up in stride, or close enough, and get it down to the Buccaneer 32, just like we designed it. But the designs didn't work out too well after that, and Reed Haley came in to put Southern back out front by 14, 24 to 10. This was certainly no chip shot. It was from 47 yards out. Ring them up, Reed. But ETSU kept coming back like the IRS, unwanted and often. On the first play of their touchdown drive, Greg Ryan hit Woodrow Dixon for 17 yards through the middle. And on the eighth and final play of this 80-yard package, the Ryan-Dixon combo worked like a charm again. And it was 24-17 and getting to be gut check time as the curtain came down on the third stanza with Charles Bostic taking the helm for the Eagles. Uh, that's when we did put Charles in. We felt like we needed a spark, and Joe had played well up to that point. Oh, well, they were they were moving up and down the field pretty quickly, but uh, we came back and uh, I thought a very critical uh, drive that uh, where Charles uh, got us in the end zone, the pitch to right on the corner. Oh, really super job. We were just running Georgia Southern's bread and butter offense, and right there at the end, I think I can't remember the down and distance, but I remember the play. We pitched it to the right. Charles made a great read. Uh, we probably had an outstanding blocker. We were probably right by the A back on that side. I can't remember exactly who was in and Chris Wright got the football in the end zone and it was just bread and brother Georgia Southern football. We've been running for years to put 31 points on the board. But before we get ahead of ourselves, it all unfolded thusly. Another great defensive play found Rob Stockton tipping Gary Ryan's pass at the goal line and Brandon Roselle was Johnny on the spot for the interception. That saved the tying touchdown. It was also, by the way, a fourth down gamble as you watch it again. Then in the waning minutes of the third quarter, CB, Charles Bostic, took the helm. There were quarterback draws and James Williams reeling off more chunks of the artificial surface. Williams was having one of the best days of his career, and it couldn't have come at a better time. As the fourth quarter began, Charles pushed it to the Bucks 20, reeling off 11 yards on this draw. And on the 11th play of the drive, Charles checked off an audible at the line of scrimmage. Definitely the right call to make for sure because the Comet himself, Chris Wright, took the pitch on the right corner, and it was 31-17 GSU. But there was still a lot of football to play. That was uh, all part on Charles. He came in and picked us up a little bit. And, I mean, that's good when the coaches do that sometimes when they put Joe in there and picks us up. You know, they're full of energy. And it gives us the energy boost too. And about that, I mean, they gave us a lot of things in the beginning of the game, and we, you know, put defense got us in great position, you know, for scoring position. But uh, they tightened up. They started doing a lot more stuff. They, got, you know, you know, tighter on us. You know, wouldn't let us do as much as we want to. And uh, it took us a while to get back in the in the zone. But the Bucks didn't stop. Those passes across the middle were still killing the Eagles. Brian Shock got this one. And then a sensational catch as Ryan's rainbow is deflected nicely by Sean Austin, but Jeff Johnson made an incredible one-handed grab in the end zone, and the gap was down to seven points, 31-24, and loads of playing time left. And after Southern failed to move offensively, the final chores were left to the defense as East Tennessee moved relentlessly toward the tying score. Another sensational catch down the middle from Jeff Johnson despite Rob Stockton's best efforts. Alex Mash then broke through on a blitz, but not in time as the Ryan-Johnson combo was still as deadly as cyanide. Then Ryan, rolling left, fires a perfect strike to Scott Dykes for 20 yards. First and goal at the nine. 
but the Bucks ran out of miracles. But not before they gave it a heck of a try. Ryan with a rainbow to favorite receiver Jeff Johnson, who almost pulled it off again. Only this time, Brandon Roselle knocked it away, and Johnson, though he still caught it, had run out of room. He was out of bounds, and ETSU was out of downs. Georgia Southern wins 31-24. We opened up real strong against them, and um, defensively, we didn't let down at all, but um, they had some big plays here and there. It's a trick play on the first touchdown. Sure. You know, that kind of kept us on our toes, and um, it kind of took away our aggressiveness just a little, not much. And um, with that aggressiveness being taken away, we kind of, like, allowed them, allowed them to have some big plays. You know, I'm just so proud of our, our football team for making the play and finding a way to win the Southern Conference Championship. All right, so am I. And we'll be back to wrap this thing up after this. Headquarters from those same wonderful people who brought you narrower goalposts and wider hash marks, the NC2A comes the first round pairings for the playoffs. Georgia Southern is home next week with Eastern Kentucky. No breather, 1230 at Paulson Stadium. We win that one, we get the winner of the Youngstown State Central Florida contest. And here are the rest of the pairings from Fearless Leader. The University, undefeated, will host Northern Iowa. Northeast Louisiana plays host to Idaho. Elsewhere, Delaware goes to Big Sky Country to take on Montana. And Marshall gets a marshmallow as they host Howard. The final four look like this, with William & Mary going to McNeese State, and Stephen F. Austin will go to Troy, Alabama to take on Troy State. Now, this is not a double elimination tournament. However, this is a single elimination tournament. You lose, you're out. So it's, that's why they call it the playoffs. And all 16 football teams that are in, 15 of those football teams end the football season with a loss, and only one of them end the football season with a victory, and that's the Mitchell National Champions. Tim, congratulations on a great victory, and we'll see in the playoffs. And now you know who we're going to be playing next week, where it's going to be, and who else is going to be in the playoffs. And we'll see you again next week with more Georgia Southern football highlights. From Johnson City, Tennessee, and the Quonset Hut, I'm Bill Edwards. Thanks for joining us, and good night.